When I say these two words, what does it do? And don't shut off the TV when I say them. Stem cells, okay? Same with me, I had that thought also, so thank you. Let's discuss stem cells today. Uh, doctor, a chiropractic friend of mine, Dr. Darcy Brunk, is gonna be here to talk about that. I wanna start out today and talk about how diet affects the microbes in the gut when a person is on chemotherapy, okay? A, an amazing story has come out. Breast density, mammogram versus thermogram. We're gonna talk about that. All that and a whole lot more. And folks, I want you to understand as I introduce this segment, about stem cells, I too had questions about it. Thank you for joining us. Today's show is brought to you by Achieve Vitality, whose mission it is to transform lives through simplicity and truth. For the past 45 years, I have dedicated my life and my whole career to finding the root cause of disease. And I now know with certainty that we must play a role in our own health care. I'm a self-care advocate, and you know what? Every time you change your diet for the better, exercise or swallow a nutritional supplement, so are you. Now welcome to Know the Cause. Hey friends, welcome aboard. Thanks so much for joining us. A headline came out of the news recently. I want to show you this. Diet gut microbes affect cancer treatment outcomes. Okay, John, go ahead and take that off right now. I want to talk to you about that. If diet and therefore the microbiome or mycobiome in the gut affects chemotherapy, why not change the diet? My question is what caused the cancer? Could it have been that gut terrain? Could cancer start in the intestine because our dietary cravings, you know, are way off, too much sugar, too much alcohol, things of that sort? So I asked this question. What we eat can affect the outcome of chemotherapy, says this article, and likely many other medical treatments, they say, because a ripple effect that begins in our gut is the etiology. So once again, we see, I've done this with you before, probiotics can help so many things so many things. Now we're learning it's the gut. Uh, by the way, the article doesn't say probiotics. Um, the article says if you want better chemotherapy, uh, then you need to, you know, work with your gut, okay? So my question is, might diet have caused the very cancer that these researchers now use chemotherapy to treat? And it begs, look, I'm, they're oncologists. Uh, they're very, very smart people treating your cancer. I've employed several people who worked in oncology, nurses, doctors. Uh, these people tell me when you're getting the IV chemotherapy um, that all sorts of sugars and soda pop is available to you. So obviously oncologists don't know this. I'm hoping today on this show a seed gets planted. Um, contaminated foods, this is horrible. Flood the Ugandan market, food experts say. According to a food expert, according to food experts, farmers and food dealers, this is in Africa, have taken advantage of the COVID-19 pandemic in Uganda to release foods on the market which are not worthy for human consumption. What makes them not worthy? Okay, stay with me. Most of the foods, especially grains, are contaminated with aflatoxin, which are very dangerous and can cause cancer, says this professor. Let me say that again. Most of the food, especially grains, are contaminated with aflatoxin, which are very dangerous and can cause cancer. Therein lies the problem in the oncology office in Dallas, Texas, that a doctor doesn't know that our grain supply, yes, even whole grains, can be impregnated during the storage process, corn, wheat, etc., with uh, aspergillus mold. And aspergillus mold makes this poison called aflatoxin that is so potent when doctors use it to study new cancer drugs, they inject it into bunnies or rats over a couple year period, this fungal poison, and they all get cancer so they can study their medications. Once again, go back to the doctor's office, the oncologist who has his patients eating sweets and drinking soda pop while they're getting uh, their IVs. They don't know that. They have no earthly idea that the foods we eat 
in America, America is the number three, American feeds, what we feed our cattle, pigs, and chickens. America is number three most contaminated for animal feeds. Then what do we do to that chicken or that pig or that cow? We cook it, slice it up, and eat it. So we're being exposed to these mycotoxins, not only in Uganda, but all over the world. In, in lower numbers, I believe here. International Academy for Research on Cancer, this is a very respected organization. I've quoted them often in my lectures. Five fungal mycotoxins are listed as possibly cancer-causing to humans. Fumonisin B1, Fumonisin B2, Fusarin C, Acrotoxin A, and Sterigmatocystin. Only one fungal mycotoxin is a known human carcinogen. Aflatoxin B1 causes human cancers, and it's the only mycotoxin the FDA tests currently in our food supply. Be careful out there, folks. You need to know this. Mycotoxins are toxic fungal metabolites which are structurally diverse, common contaminants of the ingredients of animal feed and human food. So says Mutation Research in 1999. This isn't new. The doctor doing all of the IV chemotherapy today, I wish they knew. Antifungal diet, antifungal drugs might be the way to help people with cancer. A lot of that work's being done right now. I hope you, uh, I hope you now know that. What keeps Know the Cause on television for 22 consecutive years, right? It's great advertisers, and we vet those advertisers. Um, some time ago, I met with Dr. Darcy Brunk. He's a chiropractor who was in a car wreck, and he turned to his own practice and physical therapy and diet, nutrition, everything he learned in medical training, and it couldn't help his spine. So he went to Florida, and he got something called stem cells. And he's telling me this at lunch, and automatically, folks, I'm thinking, no. Stem cells, aborted fetuses, I don't want any part of that. As you will learn today, that's not necessarily, I think most of the research going on in America, big universities, still use aborted fetuses. But cord blood and placental cells, mother authorizes to use for stem cells after she births the baby, right? Rich in these stem cells. So the first thing I wanted to know was he's vetted his stem cells and they come from cord blood. He took them himself and then he gave his mom stem cells. His vetting is very, very good. It's what I would do if I were in this field. Number two, I was worried about the price of stem cells. I look online, half of them are $10,000 to $25,000 and insurance doesn't pay for it. So I talked to him. His fee, as you will see, is somewhere between $3,500 and $6,500, maybe $7,000 max. So it all made sense. It all made sense, and he's a wonderful man. I now want to introduce you to this man. His name is Dr. Darcy Brunk. Let's take it away. Watch this. Friends, uh, joining me today is Dr. Darcy Brunk. That's a name you're going to hear a lot. Uh, Dr. Brunk, welcome to the show. Thank you. For Thanks for coming me. in today. I'm reading headlines the other night, and I'll tell you what he's going to talk about here in a minute. Back surgery unnecessary for one in six patients. Okay, that's off of... Uh, medical website. Are doctors performing too many unnecessary knee replacement surgeries? Yes. Journal of the American Medical Association, unnecessary joint replacements, cost Americans 8.3 with a B afterwards, so 8.3 billion, unnecessary. Uh, Dr. Brunk, you tell your history here, but we want to talk about stem cells. What happens yes. when you put these little independent cells back into your body? And your story was so compelling when we were talking about it. Absolutely. Well, it's why I do what I do, and it transformed my life because I was in a car accident. It herniated discs in my back and neck. You know, one of those where you get hit at 70 miles an hour. Yeah. The surgeons called it a uh, retirement level event. I did all the things I know how to do, chiropractic, nutrition, uh, rehab. Nothing really worked, and that's when I found infinity cells. And actually, my, it activated my body's regenerative capacities, and stem cells in my body were able to go where they need to go and become what they need to become. And my body repaired the disc herniations. Hmm. I remember so many years ago studying about this. We had a couple of doctors who were doing yes. this. And the source of the cells, you know, everybody watching TV and listening to the radio was saying, hmm, I don't want to go down that road. Right. You, being a man of God, you know, said, I don't want to go down that road either. Tell people what you discovered. 
Well, what I discovered, yes, there's five types, but what I believe the best is infinity cells, they're derived from human umbilical cord matrix. And what they do, Doug, is they orchestrate the perfect symphony of regeneration in your body. So your body, the power that made you can heal you, and these cells are from the umbilical cord. After a newborn is born, they're donated, and we now can use what God used to build us to rebuild us. That must have been a, a strange thing. You're by trade a chiropractor. Yes. You're in a car wreck. No big deal. Just go in and get a few adjustments, maybe some physical therapy, and everything will be fine. There comes a point in time when you, with all your capacity, couldn't fix yourself. Who introduced you to these cells, and do you remember the first time you got them? Well, yeah, I do. I actually flew down to Florida. I was in electrical medicine. We looked at this. And I met a doctor down in Florida that was doing umbilical cord therapy. And, you know, you're right. I'm a chiropractor. I was supposed to be able to fix myself, and I couldn't. And so that's why I had to change how things were, because now for the first time, regeneration, it worked for me as a doctor. And so now I know I had to bring it to my patients as well. So I know some local people, and Dr. Brunk is local out here in the Dallas area. I know some local people whose lives have been changed. And no matter what your profession, physician, chiropractor, naturopathic doctor, you're here to help people change their lives. You became so fascinated. Remember the old razor ad? Yes. Victor Kayam, I think I liked it so much <laughs> I bought the company. That's exactly what you took on. You said, I want to start doing this. Take me back to when you first had it. Is this intravenous stem cells or how do you get them? You know, it's a great question because it's very simple. It's an injection into the areas of problem or an IV that can go straight into the vein. And they have what's called paracrine signaling. They speak the language of the body, so they're attracted to damage and inflammation. So they just go where they need to go. Super simple process. Could it be this simple? One of my friends has migraine headaches. He used to work for me. Migraine headaches. Um, so bad that they were debilitating. He went and found someone doing this, had great success, but he had an injury. The bursa was huge. He couldn't bend his arm all the way. And he said, yes, it helped tremendously here. But look, Doug, totally gone. Yes. Are you saying these little immature cells find their way through the body to where pain and inflammation exists? Yes. They oh. actually speak the language of the body. They understand where it needs to go, and then they're called to that area. It's exactly what God designed it to do. Folks, uh, there were 50 million of you who woke up this morning and used that four-letter word, ouch, I hurt, chronic pain. Sometimes the scalpel can be your best friends, but there's another side to that scalpel that we'll talk about when we get back with Dr. Brown. Dr. Darcy Brunk is my guest today. He's local, right out here in the Dallas area. Um, folks, I typed in, knowing he was coming in, I typed into PubMed. I love PubMed. All research goes on PubMed.gov. And I thought, stem cells. What mm -hmm. can there be? 400 papers? 261,092 papers about stem cells. And look what Time Magazine said some time ago. It says, how the coming revolution in stem cells could save your life. I agree, 100%. New, researcher, uh, new research suggests that we should consider stem cells one of the secrets to a longer and healthier, stronger life. Uh, folks, uh, I don't know why it isn't used more commonly. I know you have your own thoughts on that. Uh, but you did it, and it really helped you succeed. I want you to go over this graphic with me. You said earlier in our talk the word infinity. Yes. Uh, stem cells you're calling infinity cells. Good idea, by the way. Thank you. Uh, these are some of the benefits. Go over those quickly with the folks. So basically what the stem cells do, again, they're called to damage and inflammation. So their language is they seek out degeneration. So they're regenerative. Healing and regeneration are already encoded in your DNA. They're anti-inflammatory. They're immunomodulatory. They're antiviral, antifungal, so they just, they're God's medicine. They go where they need to go and become what they need to become. Regardless of what uh, disease or situation, at the roots of most things are degeneration. 
I find it odd that people don't know very much about this. And I remember years ago this was big, and all of a sudden, um, I don't know if orthopedic doctors do this. Do some of them do it? I'm sure they must do. A different ki kinds, you, yes. It, it's fascinating to me, folks, the rules change when a scalpel goes into a tissue. I read you this in the opening, Journal of the American Medical Association, unnecessary joint replacements cost us $8.3 billion a year. Yes. I would sure look into, you have some options, right? Maintaining, mm -hmm. being symptom free for four to eight hours at a time, uh, or intervening, one of which is, gosh, we need to replace that joint, or another is, why wouldn't someone look into stem cells? Correct. Yeah, and I can answer that, because one of my friends told me, he uh, knew an orthopedic doctor out of state, and he called them, and they didn't want to talk about cost. Mm -hmm. And I learned that half or more of stem cells uh, companies that do this charge between ten and twenty-five thousand dollars. I mean, yours is thirty-five hundred to sixty-five, seven thousand, somewhere in there, depending Correct. on how severe the condition. It seems to me that you'd be a very popular guy. You have a team that does this for you. Tell me about them. So we have teams that are located all over the country in Florida and Washington, obviously here in Texas. And the thing that I love is it never gets old to feel young. Mm -hmm. And we like to say regenerate before you consider operate because your life literally could depend on it and you deserve that chance. Does it take once? Now for my friend, yeah. that's all it took. <laughs> it took one. Um, and by the way, um, they also gave him an IV. What was in that? Were those stem cells in the IV? Yeah, so it's a, it's a push that is purely the infinity cells. goes straight in. It's not included with a drip or anything. Super simple process. And again, what it does for these people is it allows your body to be able to orchestrate that process. And your body authors that priority, and it goes where it needs to go. So just like with your friend, he had it for his neck, but his body also said, I need it for my elbow. For, you, for your knees, and then also it might be a lung issue or a heart issue or an intestinal issue. So people go in for a specific, you know, my neck or I get migraine headaches, and they probably come back to you in a month. You follow up with these people in a month. They probably say, you're not going to believe this, but my gout seems better also, or my condition, you know, the doctor was treating me for seems better also. I wonder, I wish more physicians would get into this. I think in the future, just Time Magazine and some of these bigger publications are saying, we need to research this. We need to yes. study this. Uh, folks, if you'd like more information, they've got a great website, Dr. Darcy Brunk. It's Achieve Vitality, or AV Centers, plural, avcenters.com. Or just go to the telephone number. You know, it'll be at the end yeah. of the show. It'll be right down at the bottom. It's 1-800-340-5378. Good to see you, Dr. Brunk. Thank you. For Thank you for having me. Years ago, I read an article in a medical journal. I subscribed to a few of them. And it was on why are mammograms sometimes so difficult to interpret? or why do they have dangerous side effects? And I was thinking, okay, electromagnetic fields, you know, there's many reasons. But this really opened my eyes, and it talked about the denseness of the breast tissue itself. And I thought, okay, that must be a problem for radiologists. Look at this. Breast density related to breast cancer? On a mammogram, radiologists can detect how dense breast tissue is. Women with more dense breast tissue are four to five times more likely to develop breast cancer than women with low breast density. So I guess it was 2007, it was in the New England Journal of Medicine, 2007, when I read that. And then it showed various and sundry. Here's not dense tissue. Boy, see right through it, see a little lump. But thick breast tissue makes it more difficult to interpret Is that lump just an artifact? Is it cancer, et cetera? So I understand the problem radiologists have and doctors in general in diagnosing this condition. But keep in mind, radiologists can detect how breast, uh, how dense breast uh, tissue is, and women with more dense breast tissue are four to five more times more likely to develop breast cancer. Okay, let's look at this. Mammograms of dense breasts can be harder to accurately read. They can lead to false positive or false negative mammograms. I remember reading just a few years ago, I think it was the British Medical Journal, 
said 20% false negative, 22% false positive. So you got a 58% accurate mammogram, okay? Just think about that. What causes breast denseness and therefore a higher risk of breast cancer? Look at this, this is amazing. The causes of breast denseness, hormonal use, birth control, etc., alcohol, and animal protein. Oh, by the by, causes of breast cancer. Hormonal use, alcohol, and animal protein. Sometimes in digging, you can almost dig too far. You know, why did I get breast cancer? Well, because your breasts are dense. No, it's what made them dense, okay? But my cardiologist said I could have a glass or two of wine every night. Folks, I'm not here to judge. Don't judge lest ye be judged. That's a book I read that tells the truth. I'm not here to judge. I'm here to try and educate you so you can know that there are two people in that exam room, two grown-ups. One is the doctor and the other is you. You know, I drink a glass of wine a night. Could that have to do with my breast density? Or I've been on lots and lots of meat, birth control pills when I was younger. Could that have something to do with them? Many doctors now are thinking thermography, right, instead of mammography. And let me just show you a graphic. This came out of Breast Cancer, the medical journal, in 2016. Comparison of the accuracy of thermography and mammography in the detection of breast cancer. Okay, here's where they stand at present. And remember, this is four years ago. Have this conversation with your doctor. At present, our suggestion is to perform thermography as a complementary test to a breast clinical exam. In conclusion, it seems that despite technical, uh, technical advances in thermography, it cannot substitute for a mammography at the present time. This was kind of neat because these were open-minded doctors saying, okay, we've looked at both, Folks, I think thermography is the wave of the future. I would talk to my doctor, if you've been getting regular uh, mammograms, maybe every year get a thermogram. These are done, they're out there. Uh, and then every other year, well, talk to your doctor, that's important. Find a plan. I'd like to do thermography just to be aware, but then I'll do mammography if thermography comes back suspicious. Just my take. You know, I had uh, lunch the other day with Dr. Brunk and we worked something out, folks. Normally they charge a consultation fee to get on the phone and talk with Dr. Brunk or one of the people, a rep, who has had this procedure at the AV centers. What I worked out with him is, look, waive that, make it a complimentary, you know, 10, 15 minute conversation. Go over your questions, get them answered by someone who's gone through the procedure. Uh, and then they have an ebook that they can also make available to you if the representative and you decide, you know, I need a little bit more education, but let's start first at the very beginning. Today, something in you, your interest peaked, okay? You've heard a stem cell like me, you're opposed to it thinking that these cells come from aborted fetuses. Okay, now you know more. Thank you, Dr. Brunk, for coming in and continuing our education. Get the consultation done, you know the phone number, and then if needs be, the ebook will come your way also. God bless you, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching know the cause.